Oh, about 150 years, there was a crisis in education. It used to be that if you went to college, uh, you learned Greek and Latin. That was pretty much essential. And you would read the Greek and Latin authors. You would learn something firsthand about classical antiquity. And that served, on one level, it was, it was a, 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 certainly a class uh, thing. It was, uh, it was something that marked out an elite class from the working class, which we naturally today find in itself a rather re re repellent idea. Uh, but getting back to what I was saying earlier, there was, there was a crisis in education where uh, 150 years ago everybody was, was in college learning Greek and Latin and the, the, the trouble was the scientific revolution, which of course is a, is a very good thing for all of us. We're all living longer, we lead, lead better lives, but there was a sense that something's got to be thrown off the boat. And uh, the idea was it was the traditional classical education. And one of my heroes uh, of the past is a man named Matthew Arnold, who said, he was a, one of the great eminent Victorians, who said about 150 years ago, if you throw out classics, if you throw out Greek and Latin, we won't be able to talk to each other. Uh, obviously, there's going to, you know, reading Aeschylus in the original or Pindar in the original is going to probably be the preserve of, of a hardy few because of the linguistic difficulties that are there. But the appreciation of classical architecture, reading classical literature in, in, in translation, uh, and then if you get the bug and you love it enough, trying to meet it head on and read it in the original. Uh, this is something that, that, that's part of the human arsenal that I think it, uh, would be a terrible thing to lose altogether. A person like Gilbert Murray, who is considered very old-fashioned now, was so revolutionary uh, 70 or 80 years ago because he believed that the Greeks and the Romans belonged really to everybody, whether you had been to Cambridge or Oxford or not, that, that the classical civilization was something that should be in everybody's vocabulary. Uh, but what he was doing, he got himself buried in Westminster Abbey for a reason. Uh, he was popularizing the classics and making them a part of every man's heritage. That was really what he wanted. He didn't want them to be the, the preserve of just the, the educated elite. He wanted everybody to have access to the Greeks and Romans. And he dedicated his life to that, really. And I think that's still a very noble undertaking and is something that all people in classics should be concerned about is the popularization of classics. When Murray made his translations, that was a hundred years ago, that was in many ways a real class transgression. You know, you, if you want to read Euripides, you read it in the original because you're a member of the upper class, damn it. And the idea of putting it in language that anyone could understand. I mean, it was like Luther, I mean, it was almost as, well, it wasn't that, quite that bad, but it was like Luther translating the Bible into German. I mean, that was a death penalty offense, you know, because you, you, you're taking the Bible out of the province of the, of the, of the, the priestly elite. There's, there's going to be a book coming out by Edith Hall, which should be interesting, called Classics and Class. Maybe you've heard about it. That should be very, and I'm sure she'll really get into that. That whole thing of where, uh, ironically, even though our ideas of, you know, demokratia and all of that are, are rooted in the Greeks, the Greeks have been used as a, as a stick also to, to beat down other people. And, uh, and people who want to break free of that often are, face great great challenges, but one of the things that is going to help us is media, is, is, is modern technology, is computer, is the digital age. That will be one of the, one of the, uh, one of the keys that's going to do it.